Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this multi-part screencast series, I will show you how Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse that provides comprehensive tooling for coherence, web logic, database, Spring, now actually adds support for Java E6 and Glassfish. So let's get started. In this multi-part screencast series, we will show you how easy it is to get started with Glassfish in OEPE. How you can easily create a Java E6 applications, add JSP servlets, enterprise Java beans over there. How you can easily read a database table using the entities defined by Java Persistence API 2. How facelets, that is the templating language added in Java Subfaces 2, makes your life easy in creating web pages. And finally, we will show you how easy it is to publish RESTful web services using JAX-RS. So let's get started. After you download, install, and start OEPE from Oracle Technology Network, this is how the welcome screen looks like. So we can look at Eclipse about. As you can see, this is based on Eclipse 3.6.0, which is the Eclipse Helios release. You can click on OEPE. It shows the different tools or the plugins that are actually installed with the Eclipse IDE. As you can see, there is Coherence, Database, Glassfish, WebTier, WebLogic. Spring is installed as well, but you don't really need it if you're using Java EE6. This is the exact version of the OEPE plugin. And if we click on license, and if we click on license, you can see the Glassfish Server Tools plugins have been switched from dual license of Cuddle and GPL v2 to Eclipse Public License version 1.0. So that is pretty cool. Now let's switch back to our IDE and do some fun stuff. Let's go to our workbench. In the workbench, let's switch to our Java EE perspective. And let's clean some windows that are not required for Java EE 6 development. In the servers tab, I'm going to say new server. And I will search for Glassfish. And then I choose my server, Glassfish Server Open Source Edition 3, which is the reference implementation of Java EE 6. Click on Next. Make sure JVM 1.6.0 is being picked because that is required for Glassfish version 3. And specify a directory name. And then you can click on Install Server, which is going to show you a license agreement. You accept the terms. And as soon as you click on finish, it's going to download Glassfish version 3.0.1 and install it on your local machine in the directory that you specified over here. Download is a fairly quick process and now the installation begins, which is basically unzipping the zip file. Fairly quick process too. Click on next, it shows you the default properties, domain directory, domain name, administrator ID and password. Click on next, it shows you if there are any modules that need to be added on the server. This is a fresh installed server, so there is nothing to be installed right now. Click on finish. So here we have our Glassfish server, which is already installed. So let's right click on it and start our server. So right click and start. And we can expand the tabs. You can monitor the progress on the bottom. Once the server is ready, you can right click on it and you can say Glassfish and you can say view log file and it shows you the log file of the server that is installed on your server. So very nice and very easy. Now, this, what we did is, we, ins we installed the Glassfish server from within the IDE. However, if you want, you can also configure a Glassfish server that you can explicitly download from glassfish.org and then configure it here as well. So again, you go new server and let's change the name to locally install server. Click on next and this time I'm going to specify a the domain directory for a server that is pre-installed on my machine.
So I go to my tools directory, glassfish 301, v3, glassfish, and domains directory. And I click on open. And then again, all the values are being picked accordingly. Click on next, same thing, no modules to be deployed, and then click on finish. And so now you have a Glassfish server that is pre-installed on your machine, configured in the OEP environment. One last thing that I want to show in this part of the screencast is, if you go to Data Source Explorer, there is a sample Java DB database that is already pre-configured for you, and there is a DDBC resource that is already installed or that is already configured in your domain.xml of Glassfish. We're gonna, in a later screencast, we'll see how we can use it. So that marks the end of this screencast. And I, I want to end with actually some references. So we just saw how to get familiar with Glassfish in OEPE. And in terms of Glassfish, you can download it from glassfish.org. You can download OEPE from Oracle Technology Network. This is the Glassfish forum where you can reach out to us with questions or comments. And you can follow us on @glassfish. This is the Twitter handle. Thank you.